sorry, everybody. Real quick before we begin, uh, here's a fun joke for you. Say beer can with a British accent. Beer can. Congratulations. I have now taught you how to say bacon with a Jamaican accent. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. Anyway, um... <clears throat> From Reuters, it says, U.S. condemns latest Hong Kong violence urges both sides to de-escalate. Uh, the United States on Monday condemned unjustified use of deadly force in the latest Hong Kong violence and urged police and civilians alike to de-escalate the situation, a senior Trump administration official said. The U.S. statement came after Hong Kong police shot and critically wounded a protester and a man was set on fire in violence that prompted uh, leader Carrick Lam to denounce enemies of the people. Hong Kong police and civilians alike have a responsibility to de-escalate and avoid violent confrontations, the U.S. administration official said, speaking on condition of an anonymity after we can have stepped up clashes and pro-democracy protests across the Chinese ruled territory, a former British colony. I agree with this call to de-escalate because when protesters start escalating and turning violent, it really doesn't really make governments particularly cooperative with their demands, you know? It makes them look like terrorists. And most governments will not... I don't think any governments will honestly capitulate uh, to terrorists. They, they just want to fight back that much harder. So it's not the kind of thing that you really want to do. So this call to de-escalation is definitely, absolutely the right move. This article is a lot shorter than I expected. Okay, everybody, that's it. The video's over. No, just kidding. <laughs> you kidding? We just can't get, do a, a little uh, short, less than a two-minute thing. You kidding me? Nah, you people are... You people love me. You need more of me. The world needs more. The world needs more me. I'm just too awesome. So, uh, let's see. I guess I'll include, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, I know. So this is from Reason, Free Minds and Free Markets, and it says, NYPD cops arrest a woman for selling churros in the subway. So apparently since uh, the NYPD is easily, uh, by far, one of the most corrupt and most violent uh, police departments in the country, they've been under a lot of scrutiny lately, for a damn good reason. And now we have video evidence that the NYPD arrested a woman for selling churros in the subway. Churros. You know, little Italian bread twists with little pinches of vinegar and cinnamon in them. I've had them. They're delicious. I'm just like, she's not hurting anybody. This is a victimless crime. What is wrong with this country? <laughs> Uh, several NYPD officers arrested a woman for selling churros in a New York City subway station Friday night, saving the city from forces of chaos and destruction. <laughs> My god, this article is just oozing with sarcasm. It's amazing. New Yorker Sophia Newman posted footage of the arrest on Twitter Friday night. According to the Newman follow-up tweets, the officers told the woman she could either allow her cart to be confiscated and receive a fine, or they could take her cart and arrest her. The woman was eventually handcuffed, and her and her cart were taken away. The NYPD did not immediately respond to a request for comment. It's unclear what the woman was arrested for, but the NYPD has uh, periodically cracked down on churro vendors over the years for selling food without a license or vending without authorization from the Metropolitan Transportation Authority in 2014. The NYPD arrested 89 churro sellers and other underground vendors. This summer, New York government Andrew uh, Cuomo announced that 500 more police officers would be patrolling New York City subway to crack down on fare evasion and other petty off offenses, the Daily Beast reported. According to the latest NYPD stats, fare, fare evasion enforcement is up 50%. Even with few arrests, the department has issued 21,000 more civil uh, summonses, summonses for, far, for fare evasion. In 2019, then in 2018, while arrests have gone down 47% for the same time period from uh, 5,195 5, to 2,773 over a two-year span, arrests for evasion are down 82%. The influx of police has drawn criticism and protests, including mass fare evasion from New Yorkers who say the police have better things to do than storm subway cars and point their guns at an unarmed fare hopper or arrest churro ladies. 
Unfortunately, harassing street vendors isn't exclusive to New York City. In 2017, footage of a Berkeley cop seizing cash out of an unlicensed hot dog vendor's wallet went viral. Or there was Los Angeles war on bacon-wrapped hot dog vendors. Where, wherever a person is trying to scrape out a living, you can be sure there's a government official not far away looking for an excuse to shut them down. It certainly seems that way. And I think the solution to the, uh, to the problem is very obvious. Deregulate. Don't make it a legal requirement to have a license. Let licensing be a thing, just like letting college degrees be a thing, but don't make it an absolute legal mandatory thing. Some of these people are really super poor, and they need to do this in order to survive. But does the government care? <laughs> no. No, of course they don't. They're too worry, busy worrying about giving free health care to non-citizens or waging wars in the Middle East on, on a near-constant basis. Who cares about the poor, sick, homeless veterans or the poor people on the streets just trying to make a living by selling churro, harm, perfectly harmless churros? No. Nah. <laughs> man, th this country, this government, man, it, it, it's a joke. It is, a, it is the biggest joke. Why do they, how can they justify treating people like this? How do they think they can just get away with this, morally or ethically? I mean, they can't, they can't legally, but since when does law determine what's actually right in a, in a situation? I don't think it ever has. Probably never will. We need to deregulate this shit, and literally every major police department in the nation needs to be put under civilian oversight. And when they and then when they do major violations like this, boom! You slap that officer with a major punishment. Don't just give him paid administrative leave. I mean, real penalties. And if someone gets fatally shot, he can't be a cop unless they were an actual criminal or threatening the life of the officer. If an investigation finds that the person was unarmed and of no threat, and the cop shot him, boom, can't be a cop. Officers of law need to be held to a higher standard than the rest of us because of the amount of responsibility their position demands. But who's going to listen to me? I could shout, I could shout that there was a fire in a crowded movie theater that was actually on fire and no one would listen. That's the story of my life. I, gi I give you sage advice and nobody listens. <laughs> Anyway, that's just a little bit about me. <clears throat> so, yeah. Imagine that. Fucking churros! <sighs> oh, my God. It's like we're living in the fucking Twilight Zone or something. Is this real life? This is too strange. This is too stupid. No way this is reality. As I mess with my hair. Because <laughs> I'm a little obsessive about it. Not necessarily for any vain reasons. I'm just a perfectionist. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, anyway. Peace.